some new AI features were added to the official release of Photoshop at the end of July 2024. That'll be version 25.11, but there are some serious issues that are being caused by some of these features. So in this episode, I'm gonna cover the features, I'm gonna show some of the issues coming out of them, and also ways that you can work around them. The first feature is Generate Image, also called Text to Image and a lot of other AI apps, including Firefly, the web app. There are some restrictions on this, but you can find this feature if you were to go up to Edit and then to Generate Image. In here then, there's a lot of stuff that you can do, but there are some restrictions. Before getting to this to demo, let's start from the beginning. So the first thing you'd need to do is create a new image and there are some restrictions on sizes. Since this uses Firefly 3 as its engine, that means that it's limited to four megapixels. So what that means is if you started a brand new document, then you'd wanna make it either 2048 by 2048 or 2688 by 1536 if it were 16 by nine and then 2304 by 1792 if it were four by three. So you can do this in any open document that you want, but it really is meant for generating an entirely new image. So what you could do is simply go to File, New, and then when you create your new image, you would specify one of the sizes. For instance, if I were to do a 16 by 9 resolution, then it'd be 2688, and then by the 1536. Now I've got this new document, and I'd keep it at 16-bit pixels, just so you get a better resolution through all the editing. So once that's done, I'll just hit cancel, because I've already done that here, and I have this image. Now, at first glance, this looks like it would be pretty close to using the Firefly web app, where I could go up here and type in a prompt. Once again, that would be going up to the Edit menu and selecting Generate Image. Now, there are some other options that I'm going to get to here shortly, but at its most basic, let's say that we wanted a photo, and that photo was going to be of, let's say, a California beach at sunset with a couple walking on the sand. To keep this very simple, I'm going to select that I want this to be of a content type photo. I want this to be fairly realistic. Then I'm going to click generate. Then it goes out to the web, it does its AI stuff, and it's gonna generate then a few different alternatives. Now, if I were using Firefly, I'd have four options available to me. Using it in Photoshop, it's giving me three. You can see that if I move this properties dialog over, here's one option, here's another option, and here's another option. So, so far so good, and yeah, it does look kind of AI-ish with some of these people, but there are some things that you can do with this image, and I'll cover that also in this episode. But first things first here, know that this size here that we did, we were able to go up to four megapixels. If it were to be a square at 2048 by 2048, or in this case, it was a 16 by nine at 2688 by 1536. If we were to use generative fill, it's not going to be the same thing. So Firefly 3 was only implemented for this generate image inside of Photoshop 25.11. The generative fill wasn't, only generate image. So generate fill is still limited to the 1024 square. And I'm gonna cover some of that also in this episode. But first, let's get back here to this generate image because this at first looks pretty nice and it's pretty good. But where it really loses some of the strength of this generate image is one of the more useful features, and that's going to be when we use a composition reference. And this is something you might recall from an earlier video that I did. I've got a link to all that down in the description of this video, where I used a composition reference. So I typed a very simple prompt that I wanted to have a modern single-story house with white paint and black trim with details of a mid-century modern. But when I would just generate that, I get all kinds of results, but I can get very close by selecting then an image. So I can upload an image of a structure reference. So if I were to upload that structure reference, or in this case, they're just calling it a composition reference with this newer version, even on the web, then I get some pretty realistic looking results that were very close to that structure reference from this prompt. That's Firefly 3. 
Now, supposedly this is in Photoshop 2511, but we're gonna get very different results. Let's go back over to Photoshop and I'll show you what I mean. So here, let's try the exact same thing. Let me just turn off this layer. And as I go above here, I want to now generate that image. So I'm gonna do the same thing we did before. I'm gonna go up to edit and generate image. And in this case, I'm gonna use the exact same prompt that I used in Firefly, a modern single story house with white paint and black trim with details of mid-century modern. I'm going to make it a photo and then I'm going to now select my reference image. When I click on that, it has some examples, but I can choose my own image and I'll select that same structure reference, which is basically just a drawing of, uh, of this house, but it gave Firefly 3 enough information to make something realistic. So once I open that, and now if I generate this, the results are nothing like the web app. All that it did was basically make more drawings. That's all that it did, just some more of these drawings. Now, if you might recall from that earlier tutorial that I did, I needed to have a good render made, some type of a structure reference, a concept image, so that I could take this blank looking lot and then put this house on it. And of course I showed step-by-step step how I did that in that earlier video. But here, I'm not getting anything that's even better than that drawing. Now, there is a way to work around this. If we go to the properties of this dialog, there are a couple more options here. And one over here, this is where you can set the reference image and I can change the reference image, but I don't wanna do that. The other option over here is where I can set certain styles. Now I could have done this up front, but here I've got this other option to change that. If you go to all and you were to scroll down here, you'll come across something called hyper-realistic, and that's this one right there. If I do that and then I generate again, then I'll get some better results. So you can see it no longer looks like a drawing, and this is better using hyper-realistic, but the problem is it's still not really anywhere near what we got out of Firefly 3, which had a much better structure reference result out of it. For instance, on all these, it did put a garage that was just like it was on the drawing over here on the right side of the house. There's some different variations here, but it's enough for me to work with to get that type of render concept image for the client like I showed in that earlier tutorial. But when I look at the ones in Photoshop, this was the only one that even came close. This is far from it, and this definitely isn't it. And if I look really close on this, some of this just looks like it's still a drawing. The results just aren't there but there's even more. Let's say that we were to do this again and we went to edit generate image and this will just give us a better window to see everything available to us. We can set a reference image, we can set some effects, but we're missing a lot of other stuff that's in the Firefly web app. For instance, here in the Firefly web app, I can use photo or art just like we did. I can set the composition reference just like we did in Photoshop, but I can also adjust the strength. So I can say, well, how close should this be to that? I can adjust that and also the styles, which if I were to apply hyper-realistic, then I could change the, the intensity of that as well, but I didn't select any. So I don't need to, but also just what is my visual intensity of the prompt that I'm using. So for me, the generate image feature in Photoshop is completely useless right now. You just might as well use the Firefly web app and then download these images and put them into Photoshop to do the rest of your work, just like I showed in that tutorial. But this is only one new feature that was added to Photoshop version 2511. So the other important feature that they added when it came to AI in Photoshop was enhancing some of the generative fill with a couple other options. So let's take a look at a good example, which would be this kitchen. Now this is a prime example of where you would want to do item removal for a customer. Now, as you know, these are things that you can charge extra for. In fact, here I just did some basic item removal and that stuff's all gone using a variety of different tools, not just the remove tool, but also some other Photoshop stuff. And these are things, by the way, that I also 
also show in my course on expert editing for interior real estate photography. If you're not familiar with that course, I do have an entire series on real estate photography and videography and also running your real estate photography business. And I have links to all those courses down in the description of this video, as well as links to some of my books that I have on real estate photography. Getting back to this though, what we might want to do here is do a generative fill for this hanging uh, pot holder up here off the ceiling. This kitchen was obviously very busy. We cleaned it up quite a bit with standard tools, but now we might want to do a generative fill because just using the remove tool would make quite a mess of it. So let's say that I went in here and I selected then the polygon lasso tool and I drew then a polygon. We'll do it just a little roughly around this area so that we kind of get rid of all this pot holder. So I'll do that and also I'll just get rid of a bunch of this shelf here too so that we can start with something fresh here. So once I do that, then I would typically go up to edit and then generative fill. And without typing anything, I would click generate and it gives me a few different options. Now, none of these are really all that great, but it can get me a starting point for something like this. But there is a problem with this. So if we zoom in at 100%, we can see because this used Firefly version two inside here, it hasn't upgraded yet to Firefly version three for generative fill, that was only for generate image, we can see that the quality is low. So you can improve the quality now. This is a new feature in 2511. And over top, when you hover over one of the icons, that you did for the generative fill, there's a new little icon here. And if you click on that, that's enhanced detail. When you click on that, it'll make a copy of this particular generative fill rendition, and then it'll do some sharpening and enhancement. You can see that now I've got this copy here that looks better than what the original was. Basically just some sharpening, you might've been able to do this yourself. But we can see though that there are still some limitations because this is still working off of Firefly version two. And we can see this with the next example. So let's get rid of this properties dialog box here and take a look at this photo here. So this drone photo overlooking the harbor, let's say that we wanted to expand this. Now this is a pretty good size image and it will give a great example of some of the shortcomings of generative fill that we have right now. So let's say that I wanted to make this wider. So if I wanted to, let's say, crop this down to do a, do a generative expand, which basically this generative expand when you select the crop tool is really the same as doing a generative fill, but it just does it automatically. So what I want to do here though, is I want to make it 2000 pixels wider. So to do that, I'll zoom out and I can do that exactly by instead of selecting ratio up here, I can select then the WH resolution. And up here then I can see that it's 5,000 pixels wide by 3,400 pixels high. And what I can do here to extend it by 2,000 pixels, I can just in here go plus 2,000, hit enter, and it automatically then set it to 7,125. Now I can drag this and expand it out to where it then snaps into place. And then all I have to do is click the checkbox up here as long as I have generative expand selected. When I click that then, it allows me to put in a prompt, I'll put in nothing, and then I'll click generate. So now that it's done, we'll move this out of the way and what we can do now is zoom in here. So at first glance, it kind of looks okay until we go into 100% and then we can see if we turn off our expanded layer on and off, we can see that where it starts here, the resolution is just junk. It's just not good. Now, if this were using Firefly 3, it probably would have been better because it can do 2000 pixels wide. But this is just really, really bad because it's still using Firefly 2, not Firefly 3, for this generative fill and generative expand. So there are ways that you can work around that. You might recall there's a video, I've got a link to that also in the description here of this video, where you would do this in blocks and do this in pieces, and then you can get a real high resolution out of it. But just be aware when Adobe says that Photoshop now has Firefly 3 in it, it doesn't apply to everything, it's only applied right now to generate image. 
Okay, let's move on to the next feature, and that is what they have now as a selection brush, which I found basically useless. Here is a kitchen shot that I did just last week. This used that flambient technique that I've taught about and I also cover in the courses. And here, what I might wanna do is tone down some of the highlights that are just across these tiles right here. So to do that, I could add in Photoshop a brightness layer and drop that down, but I can use a tool known now as the selection brush to select that. So that's under where your lassos are and your polygon lasso tool, your regular lasso tool. So you can select that selection brush. I'll zoom in here a little bit and show you how this would work. So I could draw this brush around this area and then when I release it, it's smart enough to know that it closed it. But the problem is, that's all that it did when it came to the intelligence of any of its boundaries. So it detected that this is an area that I want to apply the selection to, but that's about it. Let me show you why. Let's take this now, this selection, and we'll add a new adjustment layer. We'll go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and Brightness Contrast Layer. Now with this layer, if I were to now lower the brightness, you can see that it didn't do anything about the boundaries of the cabinets here. Stuff that quick selection would have detected. So you really still have to be careful if you're using this. If you want to use this, there are some ways that can improve this. For instance, when selecting that brush, when you're selecting that selection brush tool, there's a, some options up here. If you click on this, this is where you'd set the brush size, but you've got hardness. So you can set the brush hardness here down to zero. That gives you a much softer brush. So now you can see it's feathered quite a bit more as I go across there. Now as I add in that adjustment layer, layer, new adjustment layer, brightness and contrast, now you can see that when I adjust it, it feathers in a little bit better. Still not the greatest, it still doesn't have good boundary detection up here, but it's something I could work with. And of course, since it's on a mask, then I could take an eraser tool and I could erase some of that off of there if I don't want any of that. But this is just more work than what's really necessary compared to using other tools. For instance, let's just delete this. So I'll just delete this layer, get rid of it. And you might recall from an earlier video that I did, I noted there's a new adjustment brush that could make that new brightness contrast layer for us. That though, in 2511, has moved. It used to be under brushes. If you were to hold over here, you'd see the different brushes. An adjustment brush was here, but now they've moved it to its own menu item, which is here. So this also, by the way, doesn't have a shortcut key assigned to it. You can do that if you want to by going to the toolbar here, right clicking on it, say edit toolbar, and then in here you can then modify your toolbar as you see fit. You can see the adjustment brush would be way down here, and in here then you could assign a shortcut key to it by typing one in that little spot if you want to. For me, I would just hold off on that. This isn't one of my favorite tools I'm going to use a keystroke for anyways, so I wouldn't worry about it. But with this, the adjustment brush, besides just having brush, also has this object selection tool up here. So with the object selection tool, it's automatically detecting some objects. It's not going to detect this, but if I take and hold my mouse down and drag, it draws a rectangle. Now, if I let go, AI goes out and detects, sure enough, that boundary. And we can see that because it made automatically a new brightness and contrast layer because that's what I had selected, like I showed in the previous tutorial, when I wanted that type of adjustment. Now I can take that adjustment and then tone it down. You can see that it did a pretty good job of boundary editing because it didn't overlap onto the cabinets. I'm sure we've got some here, but this is then where we can delete that. So we can just delete that off that mask. But the biggest feature that does come with 2511 is this new generate image. It does some pretty good stuff here, but it really fails at doing a structure reference. So once again, to work around for this, you would just use the Firefly web app. When it comes to generative fill, I was also quite disappointed with that, and the new selection brush, and also moving the adjustment brush, really didn't do anything for me, but everything else seems to work just fine in Photoshop, and I'm sure that this all will be enhanced over time.